What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana Sierra, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a 2v2 replay on a beautiful map East Mnet in Battle Formula 1 on the patch 2.22 between the purple model player Ari, his ally the orange model player Mateusz 316 versus the blue Isenga player One Concept and his ally the yellow Gunner player Palindru CW, okay? So Gondor, Isenga against double Mordor, not the best matchup in the universe to be honest with you. But maybe it can work out for the double Mordor team. Gollum is here to be annoying, pressuring those soldiers, and Mordor is waiting for the third Orc Warrior, which is quite smart. It's because it's gonna be a 3v1 situation in which soldiers don't stand a chance. The second soldier from Balindru, actually. I lost him. I lost him. I don't know where he is. And Mordor was able to capture this offensively against Isengard too. That's very uncommon. And also bad start from Isengard to open with a Uruk pit against double evil. When you play Isengard against double evil in a 2v2 match, you want to always open with double furnace because your eco otherwise is going to be messed up. Remember, orcs are for free, but your Uruks are not, okay? And of course, the gunner player wasn't able to deal any economical damage, not even killing workers because Ari was actually kind of saving them. And Ari will be now able to recruit more orcs. So basically, there are few outputs and you can capture them for free. Which is quite decent for Mordor. You can capture this one, build Haradrim Paris on it, you know, put the Haradrim inside the outpost citadel, so you should be in a very good spot. Gonna play going for the steeple after three farms inside the base and two farms outside. Now actually one farm outside, and he was sending the soldier forward to the second mill. They are about to get level two, which is gonna be a big achievement. They will get level two over here, and that's gonna be a big power spike for the soldiers of Gondor. They can deal afterwards with two more orc battalions, no problemo. Level 2 achieved, great. There is a troll creep over here, and same over here. I like this layout of this map. It's not symmetrical, but it kind of looks cool, you know what I'm saying? Crossbow man on the field from one concept. Good smooth here, because Uruks are tanking the damage from the orcs, and crossbow men are slaughtering them from a long distance. Double lumber mill outside, now he will have finally good eco, which will give him the chance to fill up the base with some furnaces. And the breaking point is going to be the Gondor Knights joining the battlefield very soon. Good looking base for Ari. Actually, in the late game, Double Mordor is not too bad, but it would be not against Isengard. Remember, Isengard can use Freezing Rain and kind of shut down everything that Mordor has to offer, which, by the way, is a faction that is heavily relying on the leadership part. But remember, Double Mordor can also have the chance to recruit four Nazgûls and two Witch Kings, and we have six Flying Heroes, which can be quite frustrating to fight against. Mordor going for double orc pit, no towers on the field, even soldiers here from Barindru. And if they can kill this, destroy the structures in time, it's gonna be good. But if they can't, more orcs will join very soon, so it's gonna be quite painful. The Knights of Condor are making it to this location. Coming. And good looking base, he's gonna go for the troll cage now. So the communication in this situation is very important. So while one player has to go for the troll cage, the other player should actually go for the Nazgul rush or combos. So for that reason, it would be better for you to build furnaces here. Because furnaces will give you the steel bonus, making your upgrades cost way less. And you can afterwards go for the siege works against Isengard and make catapults. Remember, furnaces are also lowering your prices for the catapults. So you don't need double player who's, who needs to go for the trolls. One player is more than enough. One concept was able to capture this outpost offensively, right in the middle of the map. And Balindru keeps pressuring the orcs, of course, as expected. What can orcs do against the knights of Gondor? Not much. Archer range coming up for Gondor, which I don't like that much, to be honest, because I think going for Boromir would be a better choice. You go for Boromir, you creep the trolley with Boromir, get him to level 4, then you put him next to the allies' combos, and your allies' combos from Isengard will get the chance to deal 60% more damage. That's gonna be quite great, you know? And also Gondor should be capturing this outpost. You know, make a well statue for his ally. So he have, has a place to get back to, to recover himself a bit. Have more leadership with the statue. And the knights, they gotta disengage. So troll cage up, the first troll has been recruited. With the purple look. It's like the new design of 2023 boys. It's the summer look. Like, it's like fashion TV, you know? Fashion of me, beefy me, fashion of Middle Earth. And this Mordor is struggling, you know, to one situation. He's gonna go for the Haradrim Palace now. A bit too late. 
and this motor player is using his mountain troll to kill the cave troll but the cave troll is like nah bro it's my home stay away from me nah sit down i'm the bigger troll i have the eye of sauron watching you watching you killing uh, watching me killing you boom son sit down Okay, he's actually pinging this for his ally, saying, you know what, you can get this one, you need money, I know, <laughs> you know, take it, just take it, bro. And the orcs are pressuring the gunner player, who is actually playing quite defensively, his archers now up on the field, the outposts over here are not captured, this outpost not captured as well, Isengard should be capturing this one as well, making a couple of furnaces to boost his eco, and it looks like he doesn't want to go for the uh, for the upgrades anytime soon, maybe he want to save up for the, for the Saruman tower here remember the troll with the tree in his hands can't eat a orc to recover his hp to full that's not possible so you need to be smart boromir is level four actually and lords is trying to creep this but troll is kind of crushing lords Nothing happened. Maybe he was lagging. <laughs> Dude, you can't fight against the troll with lords and you have no carnage in melee fight. It's not possible. Trolls are big, big and, you know, kind of crazy creatures of Middle Earth and they are hitting like a truck. I mean, not even the Faramir can do this. The only hero that can do this actually is Boromir. Or, of course, heroes like Aragorn can do this too. Because Boromir can knock him down on the ground. But if he couldn't be able to knock him down, he would also be able to win against Boromir in a one on one situation. That, that's kind of like the specialty of Boromir, the knockbacks on his attacks, which is pretty, pretty strong, okay? Anyway, so outpost here for Gondor. Crossbow man fighting against Oryx, but Oryx in the melee range will slaughter you. Arch is coming from Balindru too, to make it inside this. Warshan is going to be used on the crossbow man. Uh, the statue is here, but crossbow men are horrible fighters in melee, and Oryx actually deal massive damage. Like, everybody is going to deal massive damage to the crossbow man because they are very weak in terms of defense. Outpost here. Boromir. Faramir. Faramir has been crushed by the trolls. Boom. Boom. Sit down. We are the warriors of Middle-earth. Look at this picture. It's like a new picture for the summer look of the trolls in 2023. <laughs> it looks dangerous, though, because the original look of the trolls was kind of... They were looking, like, very friendly. But they are not friendly by all means, you know? They are actually dangerous. Crossbow man here with the Warchan. They were able to recover to full HP at the outpost. Outpost from Isengard is doing a good job. Furnace plus the Citadel giving you money. And of course, towers are protecting this. No problemo. Good piece. Lourdes has been revived. Round two against the troll. But now he took his revenge. Upgrades not coming yet. I'm pretty certain he's going to save up for Saruman. Let me take a look into his money real quick. Yeah, he's going for Saruman. It's 4.2k. And Balindri in the meantime going for the archer range level 2, fire all purchase, he's gonna get some ranges eventually on the field. And Boromir of course is level 4, Faramir has been slain though, he will get revived, he's level 3 only. We have not many creeps, and with many creeps I mean we have 0 creeps left on the map, but Lourdes is level 3. So basically, when you have Boromir level 4 and Lourdes level 5, that's 120% damage leadership. We have combos from, I from Mordor, the Berserker has to be slain, he's gonna slaughter your army if you don't kill him. Kill him man, finally dude! To the Berserker though. Um, very bad summon. Used the Roar ability. He didn't use the Roar ability. Now in the version 2.2 2, uh, 2 .2, version 3.4 you have access to the Roar ability with level 1. You know, Roar is like he will make you flee. Okay. All the rings are getting, getting killed. But good move here from Balindra to kill the Drummer Troll. Which is an essential part of the trolls being so strong, you know? And there is a outpost with combos over here. So you can't ignore this. You need to be prepared for this. You need at least, like the, the number I would recommend you is always two drummer trolls because they will make each other tankier, 50% more tanky. So you don't need to be worried. And even if you lose one of them, you have a second one to keep providing leadership bonuses. It's like essential. Boromir is manhandling those combos, but Barindu, I mean, I think is not paying attention. He's gonna get level 5, yeah, he's getting shot in the back, he's gonna use Palantir on his allies Boromir, who's now zooming, Lourdes is shooting, but this combos without leadership of Dramatroll are not very strong by all means. Ari 
has a couple of trolls un under his control, but I wouldn't recommend to go to the outpost just yet. Uh, Saruman has been recruited, who is going to be also quite dangerous against the trolls, because the second they charge, you know, Saruman can pretty much preactively cast his warm tongue into the walking uh, location of the trolls, and if he can steal all of them, the fight is over, okay? That's why Saruman is the key to win the games against Mortar in Isengard against Mortar matches. Very important hero. But this army is so strong, man. Look, 60% damage from this dude, 50% armor from this dude. This guy is only one level and a quarter away from getting to his own leadership. Plus, you have War Chant. So, all of this together can all scale up, you know, stack, and you can reach numbers, which is very scary. Not the best, you know, Fireball. In, with the Fireball, you want to aim into the back line, into the crossbow, into the Orc Arches. So, you can. Like, Fireball deals splash damage. So, if you aim it on the banner, or on the orc in the front, you will hit like one or two or three units max. But if you aim it right into the middle of the battalion of the combo, you can actually kill like 10 of them with one single hit. But it's okay, you know. As long as it's safe, that's a very strong place for Isengard to be. Two combos with full, full leadership, statue also providing you damage, armor, combat experience. So pretty scary. Four power points for Mordor player Matthias. One concept is three power points after the industry. He's still four power points away from his from his reign. Balindra has 4 power points after the Grey Company. And last but not least, Eri has 5 power points after the industry. So he, he needs 2 power points for his darkness. Okay, big commitment to the outpost. Drama Troll is far away still, but they have no heavy armor on them. Heavy armor is so important in those situations. The well is going to be taken out. It means no more recovery. Trolls are charging in, charging, 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 charging. Too many trolls to handle. Level 5 combo. They finally heavy armor, but it looks like the fight is going to be won by the double mortal team. They're actually doing a great job. And Balindra was trying to kill the Drama Troll, but that's the problem I, saw, I told you guys. Two drama trolls. If you killed one of them, that's great. But there is another one. Saruman is coming. He's gonna steal them all with his warm tongue. But the trolls are charging now. They are angry. Borom is over here. Beautiful without plus. Knocking them down on the ground. Risky, but highly rewarding. Now the trolls have to run for their lives. Okay? The drama troll will get fired. <laughs> you are fired, son. But there is one more. And that's the reason why you should have more drama trolls it's gonna queue up two of them level three troll cage with 50 person production speed increment we will give you a chance to recruit drama trolls in 18 seconds but there are more combos coming from uh Mateusz. they are splitting the map in two pieces and the second isengard rotating downside to help his ally but through Mateusz cannot punish him by going for the other outpost there is a ranger inside the ranger is hitting very hard that's why you gotta destroy the citadel first so you need to expose the rangers and then you can kill them afterwards but the crossbow man and saruman are very mobile units of course lords too with level five the units are shining bright like a diamond glowing like crazy outpost control from every double um double orc pit coming up but you see isengard rotating to this outpost was the reason why Ari was able to take this outpost now, but Indra is kind of poor at this point of the game. Like, he's not uh, really rich. He has, like, what? Zero farms outside, basically, right? Yeah, he has zero farms outside. He has no marketplace yet activated. He has it on the... He has it, actually. Okay, he's waiting for the siege materials to demolish it. And we have a lot of pings going. I think maybe he's saying, okay, you know what, Isengard, let's go to the model player Ari to his base, which can be quite dangerous. I think you need to fight front to back. There are like too many outposts from Ari, you can't ignore them. You need to go outpost by outpost. So destroy this one, destroy this one, let Gondor take this, then you rotate. If Gondor is this and your Isengard army is here, it's pretty much GG. Eagle summon. Oh boy. Eagle summon from Balindru, very good move here. The trolls are exposed, they have no fire backup, they have no combos around them. That means they will go down, get down, down to Goblin Town. Balindra has actually two power points collected, but the Eagles now, they gotta be careful. There are too many units shooting, too many strikes shooting, but Isengard is coming now from the front. And Uruks with Forge Blades, Heavy Armor, tanking the damage. Very smart move, actually. You know, making a Uruk like this with the Shield Wall Formation, Block Formation, you can send them in first and they can tank a lot. I think uh, Rain is available. Let me take a look. Yeah, Rain is available, will be used now. Uh, trolls are coming, but there are no catapults. Remember, the outpost has been destroyed over here. Boromir should be joining the army, but there is a Muma kill coming from Matthews. Nice sidestep by one concept. One concept. The one take 
But Mumakil is angry. Wrong direction, my friend. But it's funny that the archers are still shooting while the Mumakil is charging. Beautiful fireball coming in from the White, white Wizard Saruman. Boromir is rotating. One does not simply walk into Mordor. And this guy, you know, Reen, like I said, is the biggest counter. And Mumakil is coming. Isengard is scared, as he should be, but the Grey Company is dealing a great amount of damage to the moment kill. No Witch King all game long, by the way. Not a single time we have seen Witch King in this game, but I think Eri was trying to save up for him. Beautiful shot from the level 9 crossbow man, but they are taking way too much damage. Their leadership is still there, by the way. Lord's giving leadership, of course. Saruman giving leadership. Boromir is joining too. Eri is demolishing everything, which will be the end of this game. He's tilted. You can feel it. You can smell it. <laughs> Boromir blowing the Horn of Condor. Eri has been defeated. Matthias was trying with the Mumakils. But in Mumakils, you want to have like three of them simultaneously. And then you, you can't kill three of them at the same time. Jijibao plays a little of a 2v2 action. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep eating like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.